Um, our, uh, our next speaker is, is well known within uh, CSR circles, especially in China, but also globally. And he's led and built a number of CSR programs uh, for companies such as SAP and Abbott. And, uh, and now he's at UTC, United Technologies Corporation. Um, as well as his, his corporate positions, he's also advised the uh, UNDP, the Deve United Nations Development Program, the International Labour Organization, and he's on the CSR, uh, he's a CSR Forum Chair of the European Chamber of Commerce here in China. In China. So uh, let me welcome to the stage uh, Roy Jan, speaking on how multinational comp companies can localize their, C uh, their China CSR programs. Good morning. First of all, I want to thank Simba inviting me here for the second day. I also like to thank John. Basically, half of what I want to say has been presented by him already and in, in a better way. So maybe you can ignore my presentation. So I will talk about the next half. Actually, yesterday I have already talked about UTC. For those who are new here, maybe you don't know about UTC, but you know Altis or Carrier or our helicopter. So we have a, uh, so we have a uh, 498 locations of business. So we are a very big group. That is the precondition for us to be launch our CSR program in China. Actually, I've done two projects. So actually, we are integrating uh, all uh, companies within our group related with architecture into an architecture group. So this is the brief uh, introduction of our company. We have received a lot of awards from the government, media, and industrial associations. Oh, we can go through very quickly with this. Speaking of UTC's CSR, I feel UTC is a little bit different from my previous employer. It's a very solid company. So if you see our global strategy compared with other Fortune 500 companies, in terms of structure, it's very similar. So actually, there are several aspects first, which is the mandatory obligations. Yesterday, Richard has talked about compliance. Second, it should be uh, necessary obligations. Richard used a contribute to describe that, something you need to do and you need to do it better. And third is vision responsibility. So how do we combine the community demands and the organization demands together? Some call it create value, some call it innovation. Different terms actually means the same thing. So we can see there are four parts. So I focus more on the community part. I want to introduce three projects we have done in the communities. And we have three directions for communities. The first one is create sustainable cities. And energize future technical talents and support and create harmonious community. So we hope that we can use our Green Butt campaign as an example. So because we have a lot of technical stuff, so we have a very large team of volunteers. So what do they do? They put their uh, scientific knowledge related with environment and and health. They created into promotion materials, 
pamphlets. So from different perspectives, we can have this popular science pamphlets, so that, and also activities that the children and parents can participate. And this is our Asian project, including China, Cambodia, India,、uh, nine Asian countries. So. Our professional skills and also laboratory experiences, and also public science toolkits. So that is our volunteer activities. Second thing that is a global communication campaign. So we hope the future young people they would not sit at home and thinking what do they need to do for the world. So actually, it's an open. Programs between China and U.S. and in this project, we set up a challenge for the students, for a future entrepreneurs or business leaders. If you want to sell a product, what kind of problems do you need to address? So we asked the students a question. So we give them the assignments. You need to design a chess for blind people. In that process, our volunteers, our engineers, and also the students, they are divided into teams. They can develop the products. I think it it is very characteristic. We hope that we, through a series of activities, we can build up some future responsibility leaders. Another thing is about library campaign. Because you are all engaged in CSR activities, library is a very routine project. But UTC's library project, it is unique because it helps a very small public welfare organization to become an organization which runs over 1,000 libraries in, nationwide. So it was an employee-initiated campaign. So. Actually, they had a chance to know about a small organization who are doing very professional job with setting up libraries. So it has gone through a development period within the organization without integrating into our strategic thinking. One of the important thing is that they have the care for the children because that's fun to care for the children, and professionalism is reflected in the way. Because UTC has a lot of lean management processes, so apart from the operation investment we made into that, actually we invested a lot in the operation costs, and we also trained the employees with our lean management processes. So this is the uniqueness for this project. Today's topic is about、uh, three-phase transition for a global CSR project to be launched in China. So we need to take three steps. First, is strategy and capacity localization, because global strategy is one vision, but when it goes to China, different country have different cultures and market conditions. Political situations and all the different people. So your strategy needs to match with the local rules and regulations. Your operation needs to match the local operations and also capacity. And your industrial background determines what kind of project you will run. This is the first step we need to make. So that. Also includes different aspects, like John has mentioned. How do we provide the convenience need of your internal organization? How do you convert the global strategy into local KPI? How do you combine that with the local market? This is one part. Second one is the framework. I've mentioned that UTC has a lot of brands, over 20. Two major groups, hundreds of operation 
departments. How do you achieve synergy between different business units? So it's not that people are doing different things. We hope that we can have a common goal, but you cannot ask everyone to do the same thing. This is the challenge we are facing. Another thing is about uh, the five-year plan and 2020 goal. So we, you must have heard about CSR 1.0, 2.0, but I don't think that um, evolution. That is actually a process of enrichment, because it's from the deeper side, deeper part of the people. We call it Tao. And strategy also needs to have that. If you want to get a sustainable operation, this is the precondition. So, from this point of view, all of the programs in any company, it can be traditional, it can be targeting employees, it can be partnered with the government organizations or other suppliers. In the future, we also have the marketing programs. All of these portfolio can be further integrated. They are not isolated with each other. If we can set up a clear framework, and uh, we will be able to implement the strategy more clearly, the next step is how to keep in pace with the regulatory bodies. If I remember correctly, Karen mentioned yesterday about the five-year plan in their own company. For a company, you may not need to set up a five-year plan. According to your own industry, you can set up a three-year plan, but it has to be there. From my understanding, towards the past, any plan will not be stagnant. It will be adjusted according to different phases, because the market is changing, society is changing, as well as when you need it changing. Every two to three years, you will need to readjust. This is the framework internally we have committed. In the first two stages, it is to introduce in the global strategy. We may have some global network, global campaign. We would like to make it more grounded in China, including the employees, including the teams set up, including how to provide additional trainings and how to integrate it with existing programs. These are what we need. In this first stage, the focus is not in the introduction part. It is about how to learn the lessons from the global team as well as exporting your expertise towards the global team. There are several questions we can think about. How to define the range of community? A company will need to operate where you live but for UTC. Our understanding towards community is divided into three parts. In the most core part, these are directly affected by us. And for the second circle, your company is never alone. You have your suppliers. The suppliers affect to their own community. It's also part of your responsibility. Then you look at your product and services. They will have influence over your terminal users. So the community can be further extended to the whole supply chain. When we think about any community issue, you need to be having an open mind, not limit yourself into a specific area. In this way, you will be able to have a more complete understanding. Exactly how can we execute all the strategies? First of all, you can tell from the building blocks. You need to integrate your strategy with your business development goals. You need to understand why you want to work CSR, what do you need to do, and how to do. If you ask yourself these three questions, it will help you to adjust and understand your needs in different phases of your project. It can also be a foundation for your future KPI and uh, measurements. Secondly, to do any program, you need to manage yourself well. How can you drive innovation? How can you solve the problems? How can you keep an open mind in the never-stop-to-change situation? 
What's even more important are the four pillars. I always would like to address the importance of this program. I think it is not only a project. The spirit behind it is even more important. For the thinking paradigm behind a project, it decides fundamentally whether your projects will be successful or not. Sometimes you brainwash your employees, but that's not the real way to solve an issue. With the right strategy, then you need to set up a plan. Like Dr. Li Jianzhong has said yesterday, how can you gain support from internally in your organization? How to gain support from your supplier? How to commit more cross-boundary partnership? Planning is a crucial stage. In the very first speech, Zhang mentioned clearly about how they plan their strategy. After the planning, you will need to put them into action. For today's meeting, I have been here for the two days. I think I learned a lot. Everyone is acting, but you need to allocate your resources to the right thing. Everyone people is doing their own thing, but if you put them together, think of it from the both viewpoint. Seems they are very much isolated. We will also work with these NGOs. Many MNCs had founded their own foundation in China. That is a very good move, I think, to set up your philanthropy foundation internally. CSR program will be managed by a universal platform. This is also another standard we set up. Next step, you need to build up the credibility of yourself. We issue CSR report. We communicate ourselves more thoroughly. We fill in all of the questionnaire and the reform. For different questionnaire, the paradigm is different. The requirement is also different. To fill in the platform is not how good you are. It's about a self-inspection. Looking at all these questions in the platform, you will be able to understand your own loopholes and weakness. So the next stage, you can improve accordingly. We will be able to have more lessons learned, no matter how it ended up. But through a questionnaire, you need to use it to check your own weaknesses. This it means we need to have a reliable partner. I think there are three key elements to have a successful project. If you want your employee to be a volunteer, if you want the employees to use their own free time, that is horrible to both sides. The employee thinks, "I'm doing something in my free time." Whether the company is taking responsibility for that, or will I get some paid off sometime? So I think that is a very important question you have to solve. You need to show your care towards the people who deserve help. But when you are helping someone, what you do is correct or not? In addition, you need to. Evaluate yourself. Can you provide enough tools and trainings to the people, to your employees, so they can do their volunteering work in the right way? Second, you have to ask yourself: Do you have enough resources? It's not how much money you can have to donate. It is about how many resources can you use to manage your product, to train your employee, to support your future operation. When you are working on a CSR campaign, when you are contributing to the community, have you considered who is your prior target apart from the stakeholders and your customers? I think CSR is a culture that everyone has to understand. Technically speaking. 
in the planning stage of CSR strategy. We can benefit the target group, but these benefits usually are mutual if you do it correctly. As for the case studies, I will be brief. Along the whole value chain, the cultural understanding and education to the right target is very important. These are the fundamental things you have to do to make sure everyone understands. You need to evaluate yourself. Do you have enough resources to do what you want to do? And the third, can you set up it like a platform system? The whole project will not be sabotaged, even if someone lives in the middle. We have our community academy program. It's organized by our UTC HR team. We set up these platforms, these training modules. It's not about how to set up a volunteering committee, how to manage the children, how to communicate with the children. It involves a lot of other tiny details. All of these are linked to the career development of employees as well. And before I stop, I think yesterday someone mentioned about this already. How can you evaluate all of the program portfolio in your company? This is a rainforest picture. Our value, our vision, our policy, the area we care, the business advantages, all of these can be understood as the fertilized soil. We need to make sure the soil is fertilized enough to grow the veggies. We have so many supportive teams, and we need to be in line with each other. For these programs, it can be small, can be big, because in the rainforest, it is a full ecosystem. And for each kind of project, you may need different team members. We need to create such an ecosystem so everything can run automatically. This is how we understand CSR ecosystem. Thank you very much for listening. So, um, yeah, thank you. Um, I know you said that uh, you, that John had covered half your half your stuff, but um, it seems a lot. There's still a lot of differences in in implementation, um, even if the theory is is similar. But it's clear stakeholders and engaging a diverse group of stakeholders is is, re is really key um, to get to the top level of the rainforest. You know, um, and. Uh, yeah, and so thank you for going through those three three phases and the three key elements. So three is the magic number for for CSR. Uh, so we've got time for for one one quick question, um, if there is one for Roy. Anyone else? No, John. John's got it. <laughs> that Thank you. Roy, that. Thank you very much for the introduction. After hearing this, I got a nice feeling. I got a more understanding. I want to ask how many team members do you have? Team members, 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 team I'm the very first full-time CSR manager for Abbott, so in my department, it's a one-staff department. I'm the first full-time CSR manager for UTC as well, so it's only myself. I do agree on what John had said. CSR is embedded to the business units. If you have a huge CSR department, I don't know whether it's correct or not. For UTC, I call my co-worker. We have a government affairs team. We have the communication team. Got there about ten people in total. We have volunteer 
reps from each business unit, counting them all, we have about 20 to 30. So in past three to four years, oh, months, I visited them all, one by one, to create a connection. When I was working for Abbott, the first time I got together my team to work on the CSR, only six participated. When I leave Abbott, we got 65 members with seven different units. So for my team, they are always here. They are spread into different business units. For CS manager, you need to define yourself clearly. I'm not the leader, but I'm part of it.